Hello comrades, you watching Red Ivan Airsoft and today we'll discuss iconic American M1 helmets. M1 helmet was adopted by United States Armed Forces on June 9th of 1941 and remained in service all the way till mid-80s when it was replaced by Pasgat helmet. So many changes were made to the original design of the M1 helmet through its service life, so people writing books about it and obviously we won't be able to discuss all of them in this video. So I will only point key changes and we will only discuss M1, M2 and M1C helmets and we won't discuss other Second World War helmets based on the M1 design. All M1 helmet variants consist of three main elements. Steel shell with chin strap. liner and webbing inside the liner. Also it can be used with net, helmet cover or helmet band. This unique design where suspension system is inside the liner instead of being the part of the steel helmet itself made it the multi-tool of its time. It could be used as the bucket, as the cooking pot and even as a piece pot. And that's how it got its army nickname steel pot. On my table right now you can see two M1C helmets. One is Vietnam era helmet and one is World War II era helmet. The Vietnam era helmet is completely original while the second World War helmet is restored. It has original uh, Schlotter manufacturing company shell produced before the end of 1944. As you can see on this picture before restoration, this particular helmet was refurbished after the second World War and used in the 82nd Airborne Division and later was restored back to the World War II configuration. Shell was repainted and the liner was changed. Liner on the picture is post-war M1C liner. It was replaced with World War II original mine safety appliance high pressure M1 liner which was restored and converted to the M1C configuration. I do not think that originally MSA produced M1C liners but it is what it is. And now we'll discuss M1 helmet by elements and by periods. Second World War, Korea, Vietnam and post-Vietnam. And we'll start with shells. During the Second World War most M1 shells were manufactured by two companies. McCord Radiator and Schlotter Manufacturing Company. McCord began production in June of 1941 and Schlotter joined in January of 1943. Initially rim on the shell was made of stainless steel. But paint did not hold up well on such material, so in 1944 rim material was changed to manganese steel. Before November of 1944 the rim seam on the helmet was in front, as you can see on my World War II helmet. And after November of 1944 the seam was moved to the back, as you can see on my Vietnam era helmet. On early helmets chin strap loops were welded directly to the helmet, but they tend to break fast, especially if the soldiers sat on their helmets. This issue was fixed with the introduction of the swivel loops in 1943. So M1 and M1C helmet shells were produced in this configuration before the mid 80s where helmets were removed from supply. And here we should go back to 1943 when the production of the M2 helmet began. M2 helmet is the first version of the paratrooper helmet based on the M1. Before the adoption of the M2 there were some attempts to introduce the M1 helmet with modified chin strap to the airborne units, but they failed. M2 helmet was produced by McCord Radiator Company from January of 1942 to 1943. Some sources claim that they were produced until 1944, but most likely until 1943. Of course they were issued even after, but the production was ended due to unsuccessful design. M2 helmet featured fixed C loops and extended chin strap with the snaps so the shell can be secured to the liner. There are three types of liners produced during the Second World War. Initially helmet was issued with fiber liner, material similar to cardboard covered with olive twill cloth. These liners were produced by Harley Products Company and it is easy to guess that such liners were extremely fragile. St. Clair Company invented cheaper and faster way to produce liners, low pressure molded canvas with rising. They called low pressure liners. These liners were produced from April of 1942. But they still were fragile, therefore since September of 1942 high pressure liners were supplied to the United States Armed Forces, high pressure molded canvas with rising. These liners were in production until the end of the Second World War and their production resumed with the beginning of the Korean War. However, we should notice that the production of the low pressure liners 
was continued until the end of the contract in 1944. There was an insignia eyelet hole on the low and high pressure liners produced during the World War II. M1 helmet suspension system. Adjustable headband, adjustable central loop, detachable neck or nape strap, and detachable leather chin strap. This way helmet has two chin straps, one on the shell and one on the liner, since liners were often used separately for trainings and ceremonies. Until 1943 webbing was to be produced in OD3 color, similar to hockey color, and since 1943 in OD7 color, similar to olive, but leftover OD3 webbing was used in production until the end of the war. And we finally came to the distinct features of the World War II paratrooper liners. In addition to all the above, the liner was equipped with the female snaps, so liner can be attached to the shell and two A-shaped straps for the chin cup. So as you can see, the main part of the paratrooper modification is located in the liner, not in the shell. And as we discussed earlier, the weak points of M2 helmets and uh, early M1 helmets are fixed loops, which tend to break easily. So you may ask, uh, what prevented from taking the paratrooper liner and placing it uh, into the regular uh, shell with uh, swivel loops? And the answer is nothing. That's actually how the M1C modification appeared. M1C was officially adopted in January of 1945. But according to many sources, M1C modification was produced and used since autumn of 1944. But in general, such modifications could be handmade, because all you got to do is to put the paratrooper liner inside of the regular shell with swivel loops and restitch the chin strap, and you're ready to go. It is anyway better than this type of fix. By the end of the war, leather chin cup was replaced with the canvas chin strap, like you see on my Vietnam era helmet, and the adjustable nape strap was introduced in 1945. Covers. In 1942, the Marine Corps adopted the frog skin reversible camouflage cover, while US Army used nets, at first handcrafted and later British industrial production. After the war, production of all versions of M1 helmet ceased. Production of M1 only resumed in 1951 and production of M1C only in 1955. In 1951 the color of the helmet was changed to a lighter one. Also the fastening and the buckle of the chin strap were modified. Ball tongue was added to the buckle like you see on my Vietnam era M1C helmet. Chin strap was no longer sewn to the loops, but was fixed with the help of such fasteners. In 1955, insignia eyelet hole was removed from the liner. The most noticeable changes were made to the design of the M1 helmet in 1964, during the Vietnam War era. Firstly, the liner has become thicker. Secondly, the suspension system was changed significantly. The suspension system no longer had height adjustment, but overall it was not set as deep as the previous one, that's why the helmet sits quite high on the wearer's head. In addition to the headband adjustment, adjustable three-strap neckband was introduced. Leather chin strap was deleted. In the paratrooper version, A-shaped straps were attached by the separate rivets. On earlier helmets, A-shaped straps were attached to the liner by the rivets holding other elements of the suspension systems. In this case, if one rivet is gone, two elements are broken, so new suspension system fixed this issue. Accessories Since 1959 helmet was issued with two-sided helmet cover in Mitchell camouflage pattern. Few words about helmet band. Helmet band was standardized back in 1942 and can be seen on the pictures as early as 1944, but became widespread only in Vietnam. Issued to the army, the helmet band was not widely available to marines until late 1968. Consequently, resourceful marines crafted bands from improvised materials. From 1969 to 1981, covers were also produced in RDL camouflage. Few words about post-Vietnam modifications. In 1972, liners with removable suspension system were introduced. Also in 1970s, liner featured lime green color. I call this modification post-Vietnam, because despite the fact that the war was ended in 1975, army was withdrawn from Vietnam in 1972, and most marine combat units soon after the army. So chances to see one in country are close to zero. In 1973 a new chin strap was introduced. It was attached to the helmet swivel loops, like the standard infantry chin strap. But the chin strap itself was like the paratrooper version and all older helmets were mandatory upgraded with this new chin strap. During the Grenada invasion, only upgraded M1s or para M1Cs were issued. 
and M1C helmet suspension system remained unchanged, except detachable liner pod introduced in 1975. But actually, during the Grenada invasion, mostly Pasgat helmets were used. From 1982 to 1984, covers were also produced in M81 Woodland camouflage. So, thank you for watching, guys. I hope you like this video. Subscribe to my channel, comment, like, and if you consider to support channel financially, links are in the description. See you next time. Bye.